Pro's coverage of BlizzCon 2014, brought to you in part by Steel Series. Winning is everything. Hey guys, it's our last interview of BlizzCon 2014. So excited to be here with Alex Afrasiabi, Creative Director for World of Warcraft. And of course, the first thing we want to talk about, Warlords. Yes. Next week. Hell yeah. How's your level of excitement? Are you just... It's like at a 90. 90. Out of 10. Yeah. That works. Yeah. That totally works. It's up there. So, um, first off, last year, when this was first announced, and as we've gotten a few reveals throughout the year, there's been some backlash here and there about a lack of diversity or some issues there. What have you all, what steps have you all taken in Warlords as you keep developing it this last year to address some of those concerns the community had? Um, we're, we're crucially aware, um, and we are making, and do make efforts to, to kind of add diversity and depth to the world. Um, so it's, it's an ongoing process. That's really all I can say about it. It's something that we, uh, we're sensitive to, and we are trying to do better. Yeah, I think that's the best thing you could possibly do. I think so, too. Gaming, for a long time, has sort of wallowed in non-diversity, and very much it's been a boys' club, and it's it's great to see you all moving in that direction, being aware of it, and, and other creative people. Yeah, being aware of it. Absolutely. absolutely. Um, so in Miss Pandaria, we had a lot of these uh, smaller content patches between raids. Uh, we haven't heard yet. What is the strategy for content patches as we move forward with, with Warlords? We're going to have some. <laughs> I can't really talk about future content. Um, you know, we've we've already talked about a future content patch that has Tenon, um or the rest of it. Um, so that'll certainly be there. Um, there will be an awesome raid, for sure. Guarantee it's awesome. Um, but really, I can't really talk go into detail about stuff we just haven't released yet. Right. Um, but uh, we're actively working on stuff. I think we're more like is it? You plan on the same. I guess it's sort of schedule, small stuff, or you can't even get into that. I can't. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, it would kill me. That's fine. I'd be disappeared. I always knew it. I knew it. Yep. Yep. Uh, several months ago, we had an we had an art craft about accessories like the hunter quivers, paladin relics. Haven't really seen or heard anything about them since. Are they still in the pipeline for warlords? Um, I cannot confirm that they are or are not. Because I really don't know. Um, uh, we we have a lot on our plate at all times. Our plates, our table. It's a table full of plates. Um, and so uh, we absolutely want to do stuff like that. And I think Chris Robinson has said as much as well. Um, but it's it's <coughs> that's, a, that's his wheelhouse more so than mine. Um, so hopefully, I'm hopeful too. Like every other fan, I want them. Talk about garrisons for a second. Yeah. Big new feature. Mm -hmm. um, we've heard a lot about them. Pretty much, I think most of the information is out there at this point. With the, with the launch coming up next week, what we're wondering is for for players who aren't able to put in as much time from week to week. Maybe they're not big. You know, they're not putting in 10, 15 hours a week on the game. Or, you know, maybe even a couple hours is a struggle. Uh, there might be a concern that you know, are they going to really feel overwhelmed just trying to approach garrisons, or how is that sort of being mitigated to allow garrisons to feel like something that everybody can get into? Um, we design it that way, that garrisons are something that everybody can get into, and with what you just said in mind to some degree as well, which is um, we do not want you grinding your nuts off in a garrison for five hours a day. That is not the intended gameplay. Um, and we, we do expect that you can check in a couple times a week and have success in your garrison. Um, so if you check in more often, certainly it'll be better. Um, but so is that is applicable for the game as a whole, right? right? So, um, but they're absolutely friendly for, you know, there's the offline progression portion of things. Like you send your dudes out on missions, you've got 10 plus hour missions, go to bed, wake up, maybe check in, maybe you don't, but he's doing stuff for you, or she. Um, and or it honestly, there's weird things as followers. Um, so it, it's completely in consideration, and hopefully that players that don't have you know dozens of hours per week to dedicate will still have enjoyment out of a garrison, will still gain enjoyment out of a garrison. That's great. Well, we're really excited on our team for Warlords. Looking forward to it next week, and uh, everybody's getting pre-ordered and ready to go nice. on it. 
So let's talk about 10 year anniversary. Yep. That's huge. Now this yep. is crazy. I was, I was looking this stuff up. The other most popular games in 2004, mm -hmm. when World of Warcraft came out, you've got Grand Theft Auto San Andreas, mm -hmm. Halo 2, Half-Life 2, and Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. It's amazing. Now these are all games that came out on things that, you're talking about technology that had been put out to pasture long ago. Yeah. Consoles and, and old video cards that, by God, if they're still functioning, that's, 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 yeah. that's bewildering. Um, and every year, of course, we hear that some new games come out that will be the death bell of WoW! And it, it's always bullshit. It doesn't happen. WoW's still here. And uh, new expansion this week. Millions of people still, monthly subscribers, in a world of sort of free-to-play freemium. How has WoW managed to evolve and keep recapturing these imaginations and that loyalty year after year? I don't, like, because I, I get this question, and bit and it's always hard to answer because I'm like we, we haven't like changed the formula you know or anything or done any crazy voodoo that you know of um, maybe we have um, some weird witchcraft um, we uh, that same burning passion to make World of Warcraft that existed in 2002 2003 2004 when we're up till four in the morning crunching out those last Molten Core faction quests or whatever it might be. That was my sad case. Um, the, the passion to get that done was and is never about getting a paycheck. It's about, I love this game. I love playing this game. I want to make it better. And if there was any one magical bullet or answer to the question, it would be that um, there's 200 other, 400 other, 500, 1,000 other people exactly like me working on WoW. And so when you face that and the public takes that, like you can you can feel it. Like you can feel it playing WoW. It's like you, you see it there. You feel the the, the, the passion of the player, of the, the designer, the developer um, because they so badly want to make the most awesome MMO in the world, that's and they're doing it. It's beautiful. And that's often the case with a lot of great things, not even just games. Uh, you know, the, the founder of Whole Foods talks about conscious capitalism, the idea that if you're going after, some, after something you're passionate about, something you love, you're trying to make the world a better place or whatever it is, the money just follows. And by putting those priorities in the right place, you know, the yeah. passion shows through. Uh, absolutely, and I, and I think that 100% um, correct. Right, like it's, we 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 make the game we want to play, um, and we play the the game we make. That's it. It's fantastic. Yeah. So, flip side of that question: ten years. We can easily track. We can look up how the game has changed, how the technology has advanced in ten years. How has that community changed and grown up with World of Warcraft? Huge ways, right? I mean, community has greatly evolved over ten years because you know if you think about what was out at the time from an MMO perspective. Um, that was our only kind of waterline that we had in terms of like, wh where's this thing go? Like, where's the upper limit? Or it's like, you had EverQuest, which is, by the way, a fantastic game. Um, played my life away at that point. Um, and UO and DAOC um, is kind of the big three with EverQuest being the, the king. Um, and at the time, the, the kind of, the, the the zeitgeist, I guess, of, you know, of that era. Like, it's, it was very different, right? It was like a, like what, how games were played and how MMOs were played, and, and it was completely, like, there were quests and you didn't do the, 100% different. And then WoW came on the scene and changed the entire script for the most part, you know? We innovated in a lot of places and added a whole new layer, many new layers. Um, and by doing so, we introduced, um, millions of more people into the thing that we thought was the coolest damn thing in the world, which is an MMO. Um, and they grew with us. So the things that initially bewildered them and puzzled them or made them angry and all of these things that as we learned a lot right along with them, um, also grew and evolved, right? You know, we, we, when you first, the first time you ever did a bring me 10 bear asses quest, I promise you, you thought that was cool. I promise. I don't care what anyone says. First time you ever did that, you were like, whoa, 
this guy, this dude just asked me to bring him 10 bear asses. That was amazing. <laughs> bear ass quest number 400, not as amazing. Um, and, but that's firmly, firmly entrenched in the evolution of the public player mind. And they understand that, you know, so, so it's, it's a balancing act for us as like players um, grow and the things that they liked once they no longer like for us to make sure we um, give them the thing that is the alternative that while maintaining the subsystem or the, the infrastructure level system that supports it which is ultimately we need the bear ass quest right in some way shape or form right it has a purpose um, for for the content driven game that wow is for the way it is so how do we deliver that 10 years later um, without really upsetting this evolved player base? Um, and so, sorry to say it, sometimes you're still going to get the bear ass quest, but there's a whole lot of other cool things in our toolkit now that allow us to kind of make it go down a little more sugar. And of course, now the game is old enough that you have children who have been born after 2004 mm -hmm. where might be their first Paradise Quest. Yeah. So it's awesome for it's them. Still fresh and still new. awesome. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Uh, and so, looking forward, the next ten years, what do you what do you think? How 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 does World of Warcraft approach that future? That, that this could very well be another ten years of World of Warcraft. I hope so. Better be. Hawk on linoleum, whatever this is. I don't know. Um, I think, I mean, this is always a tricky question. I mean, um, we're going to continue making the best WoW we can make. And what that also means is that we're going to continue to innovate where we can. We're going to continue to iterate like mad on, on our you know, development of the game. Um, and we're never going to stop. 10, 20, 50 years from now. As long as, as people going. love it. Yeah, basically. As long as people love it, as long as we love it. Uh, there's no end. Okay. So for several years, for a while recently, it, it looked like that Blizzard was going to become a two MMORPG house with the development of Titan. And it was canceled. Okay, we're good with that. Uh, we know part of that has spun into Overwatch. But I'm curious from a Warcraft perspective. Now that Titan's gone, and it's very much, no, no, we still have this one, the king of, of MMOs, what has that been like for the Warcraft team? Have you been able to like, pull any of the things that were in development there, any mechanics or ideas, or any extra pressure or relief of pressure? I'm just really curious how that may have changed the Warcraft team when that was canceled. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't really talk about Titan. It's, right. uh, we, we know it's canceled, but um, the Warcraft team, um, they continue to operate as they always have, we always have, which is we're making the best while we can. Um, and regardless of what happens, that is our highest goal, right? That is our directive. That is what we want to do. That is what we're pushing towards. So that'll never stop. And that, that like I said, it's, it's these things out, you know, outside of our control and influence, like we're going to continue as a team uh, of wild builders. And that's really it. Twentieth anniversary of Warcraft as a franchise. Uh huh. That's huge. Yep. And especially with the way esports is now evolving and growing, have there been any rumblings or any even excitement or whisperings about maybe Warcraft returning to the RTS world? Because uh, I mean that esports, it's just it's exploding. It's huge. I can I. No idea. No, no comment. No, no. You know. Um, it's a neat idea, and I've, I've heard it um, from plenty of people. Because you know, it's, it's, again, it's like, um, these are these are things people are passionate about. They're not just talking about developers, but fans, obviously. And, and, um, I never say never to anything, um, because you know, there's always the point oh oh whatever percent chance that, um, but I'm saying never to this right now. No, I'm kidding, I'm not. Um, I have no, I, it's, I, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. What I'm saying is I don't know. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Pleasure. Good job, a little early. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>